Hi, everybody, and welcome to A Fearless Female Entrepreneurs, where you will receive expert advice and inspiration from 20 fierce feminine leaders and entrepreneurial experts who want to help you supercharge your power as a feminine thought leader and ignite your own powerful rising. So I am your host, Jocelyn Mercado, and today I am so excited to announce Teresa Pridemore. Welcome, Teresa. Hi, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for being a part of this. I'm so excited to talk with you today. Oh, I'm excited too. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. So for everyone who's on live, um, let me welcome you here. So if you are on live, go ahead and type your name and location into the chat so that we can see where everyone's calling in from. Always wonderful to see our lovely global group that we have here. So yeah, don't be shy. Hi, Laura in Portland. Hi, Laura. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Louise in Illinois. Don't be shy, everybody. Hi, Lauren Rose in Paris. Hi, Pamela in Iowa. Wonderful, wonderful. I know we have more people joining as we go along. So yeah, just go ahead and keep on putting your names in there. Hi, Ibtisam in the UK. Good to see you here. And also, before we begin, I just have a quick little public service announcement. I want to let everybody know that the special $99 price for the unlimited lifetime access to all 20 of these amazing interviews with these incredible women entrepreneurs, uh, the $99 price only lasts through the end of the day, Saturday, tomorrow. So be sure to claim your lifetime access now so that you will not miss out on any of these speakers. Um, we're on day five now, so if you've missed any of the interviews or if there are any that you just loved and you want to come back to and listen to them again, you know, be sure and claim that lifetime access. So if you're on live, I'm putting the uh, link to lifetime access in the chat right now. And if you're listening to this as a recording, just scroll down a little bit below the video and below Teresa's free gift and you'll see the link to claim that lifetime access. Um, okay, so back to the to the main event here. So... Teresa, let me just introduce you to our audience. Teresa Pridemore is a soul brand strategist and online business mentor. She believes that soulful, high integrity leadership is possible and that your visibility is vital to uplifting your full purpose. After running a successful web design and branding agency for over a decade, Teresa craved a deeper level of meaning in her work and desired to serve in a bigger way. She asked her guides, consulted her pendulum, and a new incarnation of her business emerged, Sovereign Spirit, a soul brand mentorship and online strategy consultancy designed to address the deeper challenges that spirit-led entrepreneurs face when approaching matters of visibility, value, and sustainability. Now, Teresa supports growing leaders in fully claiming their genius through inspired brands and step-by-step -step visibility strategies. When you are ready to claim the next level in your work and audience, Teresa is the person to call to help you navigate the terrain of going bigger with your expression, visibility, and mission. Okay, wonderful. So, Teresa, your topic for today is Harness Your Brand Magic, Power Archetypes for Female Entrepreneurs and Lightworkers. So to begin, could you, could you tell us a little bit about your philosophy on branding and why do you call it soul branding? <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think a lot of people when they think of a brand, when they're, especially when they're starting out, you know, you think, oh, I need a logo, I need color, a color palette, I need to know what my photos look like. They tend to think of their brand in the context of how their materials look, their website and their business cards and things like that. And of course, or how they're dressing, you know. <laughs> and of course, those are certainly places where the brand shows up, but a brand is more of an energetic frequency that is transmitted through everything you do. And I think um, actually the place that the brand should live the most is in your messaging and, and, and how you show up and how you speak about what you do. And so I, my big goal, I, I, instead of saying branding, I tend to say soul branding because it's, it's about getting in touch with that frequency. And that's a part of the reason I love archetypes so much in this work because archetypes are a great way to step into very specific kinds of frequencies when you're trying to create um, 
uh, a, a kind of a, an attractive resonance, right? You're trying to attract people on an energetic level as well as that physical three-dimensional level where you're manifesting that frequency in materials and how things look and how you dress and how uh, you show up to things. So uh, yeah, so that's the, my philosophy on branding is that you want to go deeper. You want to go into the energy of what you're creating, the intention behind what you're creating and, and then make sure that that frequency is apparent in everything that you do. Yeah, wonderful. And I know, you know, all the women who are attending this event are, you know, they're on a mission, like they have yeah. a major life's purpose, soul's mission, um, you know, reason that they've created their business or are working on creating a business. So I think yeah. that will really resonate with everybody here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's certainly, you know, um, when you are mission led, when you are spirit led, in some cases, a lot of the clients I work with would classify themselves as spirit-led entrepreneurs and um you you, you gen generally tend to pay more attention to that frequency things have to feel authentic they have to feel um in alignment with your values and and so you know there are ways to there you know there's of course a million different ways you can communicate your values but when you're really clear on on that going in when you're clear on that um you know, that what, what is important to you and, and how you want to communicate and how you want people to feel when they're engaging with you, then you can intentionally and deliberately, you know, make sure that that ripples out and is mirrored out in everything that you present. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Well, could you share, um, because I know so many of the, of those who are on here, you know, on this call are certainly consider themselves light workers or some yeah. variation. Yeah. Light workers. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what unique challenges do light workers have as far as creating a brand and becoming visible? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So really as, as light workers, there are a few things that, that we can run into when we're stepping out into more visibility. I, I find that a lot of light workers, people, especially healers and practitioners, um, you know, in the beginning, rely a lot on getting referral business <laughs> because, uh, you know, usually they're really amazing at what they do and they can get a lot of referral business because they, people get s such incredible results they want to share. And of course, you know, you can definitely attract a lot of clients uh, that way, but there's always a, a ceiling that you hit when you do that. And a lot of those business owners get to a point where, they have creative, they have goals or creative visions that require more resources, require them to rethink how they're structuring their business and, or may, maybe make them want to make more money. Right. And so they have to start thinking about getting more visible. And it, I, it's funny, the, the rubber, this is where the rubber would hit the road back in the day when I was doing websites for people, because we would, it, there was, there were funny ways that resistance to visibility showed up in the process. So um, it sometimes came in like taking forever to get the content together, feeling a lot of lack of clarity around that. And I, and I over time realized that that was actually more about the visibility piece. You know, our, I don't know if I want people to see me. I'm afraid that this new thing that I'm doing, I'm going to get judgment or ridicule, ridicule uh, because of it. And especially if you <laughs> have anything that is maybe... Uh, you know, we'll call over here in Portland woo about your work. <laughs> if it's a little more woo, if it's new to you, if you're just coming out as an empath uh, or a healer and you were doing something more traditional or mainstream before, you know, those kinds of fears come up. But then it would all, with the website, sometimes I would, uh, we would go to launch day and I, you know, it'd be like, it's, it's live. Now you're going to go share it with everyone, right? <laughs> then they would it <laughs> sometimes take them a while to like build that inner reserve and their readiness to go tell everyone on Facebook, I have a new website, <laughs> you know? So, um, it was funny. And that's when I started to realize that I needed that, that, that was the work I was really doing with people was this inner work around visibility. And I, I shifted my business model to, to accommodate that. But, you know, light workers, we, I mean, there's a lot of reasons for how, or how and why that visibility fear can show up. And, and sometimes it is about being seen in a new way. Um, it, it's funny, you can even have empathic gifts and have been doing it in your work. And then you do something that's just a little weirder to you, or you think it's a little weirder to other people. And then then there's another layer of resistance that shows up around showing up in that, you know? Yeah. So that's yeah. really funny, but some of it comes back to like 
can be like pictures of being too big or, you know, when you're a kid, like people treating you like you're strange and it, that kind of feelings of uh, exile and os being ostracized for being unique and different, those can come up when people are stepping out into greater visibility too. Yeah. Yeah. This is really big. And this is just yeah. so important to be talking about because, yeah. it, it, you know, I know when I, um, many years ago when I was in corporate, but I was creating Sacred Planet. I, oh, wow. I, that's a shift. Yeah, that was quite a shift. And I <laughs> yeah. like kept those two worlds completely separate. Like nobody in my old world knew what I was doing in my new world and vice you know. <laughs> And never the twain shall meet. <laughs> never they shall meet. And when they did, that was something. That was very confusing. Oh, how cool. So, what was that like? But it was, so that was after I had quit corporate, at least. Uh -huh. I wasn't really trying to like uphold the uh, image <laughs> over there anymore. So that helped. Uh -huh. But yeah, I just, um, want, you know, at some point just decided to take that dive and, and connect the two worlds. Yeah. And there was some fallout for sure, you know. Uh -huh. You know, as always, our relationships change when we do that and everything. That's but, true. That's but it's true. about becoming more true to who we really are, you know, and, and fully expressing. So, yeah, you know, so the, the benefits far outweigh, you yeah. know, the, the problems that will come up. And it's true. You know, um, I also work with a lot of people who are shifting into more leadership and shifting into different roles um, and and when they do, you know, the, the big fear is, am I going to lose my old client base? I'm going to lose my old audience. Yeah. You will lose some, but you will gain so many more just for, again, it comes back to that, that energetic part of, of the, the energetic part that's part of your business, part of your brand. When you're really aligned with what's true for you and with your truth, with your expression, with your passion, and you let that flow through you, you're way more magnetic and you're going to attract more people to you. It's just, you have to get over that first little hump, right? And, yeah. and the fears that are associated with it. Definitely. Yeah. And the ones who stay, the ones from your, you know, old audience that stay yeah. with you, those are the ones that are really committed to you that are, you know, yeah, really they tend to lean in more. They're like, thank you. We, we know that yeah. you've been you know, people tend to know before you do that uh -huh. something is coming. Like they go, yeah, duh. Like, thank you for finally doing the thing we've been waiting for you to do. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. And those are the people you want to keep. So it's yeah. like a, I feel like it's a refining process of building, you know, your, your truer and truer tribe. Right. right. As we go I, I, I agree. Absolutely. And you got to give yourself permission to be seen by them. You know, people tend to think that, a website is visibility and it isn't, it, 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 it just lives out there and it doesn't matter how much SEO you do, <laughs> you know, it's not necessarily going to change the game. You have to keep showing up over and over again so that you can be on people's radar so they can get, get learn what your, your message is. They can learn all about what you care about and decide for themselves if they're aligned with that. Yeah. 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 And I always think, don't, don't be afraid of the unsubscribes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. right. I oh, yeah. Freaking out so much, you know, and now I know that it's just that I'm getting more and more clear on what my real message is and the people yeah. that, that are, just, are dropping away. And it's so yes. someone asked me yesterday if I had a mantra for unsubscribes and I, I need to come up with one. But basically, I said, you know, just look at it as your uh, your read, your your open rates are going up. <laughs> your, right. your read rates are going up because you're getting more focused. Uh, I have a, a friend and colleague here who she says, uh, uh, some people, they, people get on the bus and then they get off the bus and then maybe they get back on the bus again later, you know, <laughs> just look at it like a bus. I'm like, that is actually pretty brilliant. Cause yeah, it's that's good. people check out for a bit. They're like, yeah, that's enough for now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really not a big deal. It's never personal, you know? Right. Yes. Well, tell us more about this concept around archetypes and how and and why that is important when we're working on our brand yeah so when we are um trying to brand especially if you're intuitively kind of building your brand on your own bit by bit you know that's the way a lot of uh smaller solo preneur business owners end up doing it you we tend to kind of like throw spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks, you know? <laughs> and, and because we're so multifaceted ourselves, it can be challenging to, to make it feel cohesive, you know, to refine it. And so one of the, 
the quickest and easiest ways to kind of bring some cohesiveness to a brand is to really get clear on what you what kinds of bigger energies that you're trying to model in what you're doing what's the most important energy for me to model and in in my brand you know and and then you know and you can pull archetypes from so many different sources it's not like there's like one perfect source of archetypes to tap into you can think about um people that you're drawn to, you know, tend, they tend to represent an archetypal energy. I mean, for generations to come, when we think of Prince and David Bowie, you know, they will be their own archetypes now, right? <laughs> they, they have their own archetypal energies that, we, that we, we think of and tap into. They're not even the real person, right? They are archetypes of themselves at, at this point uh, to most people. So there's, there's celebrities or people you're drawn to. There's, of course, um, I, I use tarot a lot. So the major arcana of tarot has several archetypes that are great for tapping into. Um, and also, you know, goddesses and gods. And you can, you can look at mythology for, for different kinds of archetypes, um, old stories for archetypes to step into. And there are different ways to use archetypes. You can use them... Um, to step into a specific kind of energy that you want to step into for different experiences within your business. You know, um, like when you're speaking, you're going on a summit like this, you're, you're doing, um, uh, you're talking to a, a client, a potential client on a call, like what kind of energy you're modeling there. So that's, that's, I mean, again, your brand lives and breathes through these micro engagements as well as other things that you're doing. Uh, you can step into a specific archetype when you're writing an email, um, but when you're getting clear on your brand, it's a good idea to pick a couple that are really important um, energies that you want to model, and they can help you make decisions too about you know, what kind of photography you're gonna have, what kind of uh, color, color themes you're gonna be utilizing through your brand. If you get, you don't have to be only two archetypes all the time in your business if you pick two right you yeah. could be all these others on the sidelines as long as they make sense within the overall picture um so that's that's one one way to look at, at at archetypes there and then there's another you know i was talking about stepping into energies and stepping into archetypes there are actually also a, a variety of archetypes that i've identified for light workers and healers that they 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 model and they're more um, kind of practical archetypes you know you've got certainly the two that I talk about the most are in which I think are the most powerful archetypes for women in business are the uh, the priest the priestess and the queen those are the ones I end up talking about the most because they have a very strong relationship with each other and how they can help you sustain your business but they're certainly you know, there's the healer, there's the teacher, there's the muse, there's a bunch of different archetypes that we, we play with and, and everyone has their primary combo, you know, that they do in their work, primary combination of, of archetypes that they're stepping into. And when you can get really clear on those, then you can actually um, really hone in on why your work is special and, and unique and, and amplify that. Yeah, I love that. And I love this idea that, you know, we're not choosing one archetype and that's the one we have to stick with for the next five years or something, you know, that there's, yeah. that we move in and out of different archetypes, depending on what we're doing, depending on what, you know, what we're, what it is that we're creating based on right. that archetype. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Abs absolutely. And, um, you know, I, oh, there wasn't, I was going to say, but I, I will talk a little bit about the priestess and the queen archetype actually, because that's kind yeah. of the core of like what I think is, Really important. So this is something I've identified in the last couple of years, especially working with my client base. Um, I found myself getting really curious about how these two archetypes play together in a lot of the businesses for a lot of light workers. So um, the priestess is actually a lot the, is the archetype that most employ at certain in in the work of their business when they're working with clients. And so the priestess is in charge. Of creating the container she creates the container for healing and she is the the translator of of the spirit world you know of spirit of you know her guides yeah yeah and so um and it's this is kind of a geeky thing like there's a difference between her and the magician magicians like manifesting it right 
but the priestess okay. is is like the communicator, the conduit for the the mystic the mystical arts, the the the, the wisdom that is hard to see at, uh, for most people. And so, the priestess wants to create a powerful healing container because she knows that you know we, in our in our very kind of more masculine centric world, everything's about pushing, right? Everything's about making things happen. And the priestess lets things happen. And the reason that she trusts that things will happen is because she's set up a powerful container and she knows how to use her tools to bring, bring this energy into the experience. So she's the one who makes it possible for the transformation to occur. You know, everybody who's creating a healing container is creating some kind of transformation. And so you know, the, the priestess just wants to do her work. <laughs> the priestess just, she just wants to do the healing. She just wants to, you know, that's what she wants to focus on. And you'll hear a lot of healers say, you know, I just want to do my work. Do I have to do all this marketing crap? Like I really don't. Right. right. Someone else take care of that for me. And, you know, and it's, it comes from a good place. You know, we, when we see that we have the power to offer transformation, we want to do more of it. It's addicting. It feels amazing feel like you're helping people transform. Yeah. Um, our zone of genius, you know, if that's, yeah. if that's what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. And so the thing is, once upon a time, the priestess had someone giving her a temple <laughs> to work in, you know, to do her work in and to support her. But we don't have that mock-up in our culture right now. And so women have to make their own temple. They have to be their team to be in charge of supporting their own inner priestess. And so that's why she needs her queen. <laughs> and so you employ your queen to take care of your priestess, mm -hmm. you know, and she is in charge of building the empire, so to speak. She creates the community to bring the people to work in the priestess's temple and her container. And she creates the sustenance and financial thriving to support the priestess in her work. So mm -hmm. you can't, yeah. yeah, you have to, um, you have to, I mean, a lot of, if you're going to be bringing in such high level energy, transformative energy in your work, you need to be able to um, <laughs> take care of yourself, feed yourself, not be stressing about money all the time. You know, those are the most basic things, right? But a lot of people to maintain their frequency need regular body work or, you know, energy work. They need to have time to meditate and have spaciousness in their day to really get in touch with that higher energy. They need um, to feel expansive enough to bring the best work possible, you know? So the queen creates space for that and she takes charge of the marketing and the messaging and things like that. So she's there to support her. Another way I've seen this, there's like kind of another mock-up like this where it's like your adult supporting your inner child, <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. Like, you know, saying, okay, guess what? I'm going to give you time to play, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and then, and then when I do that, you're going to support me in getting what I need to get done. Let's make a deal, <laughs> you know? That's very interesting. Yeah. 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 So that, I see when people can call those both in, then they're more successful because you get out of this. Uh, I mean, we, we make, it becomes an excuse at some point, not, not to be, you know, hard about it. And I know, I know this from personal experience, the whole, like, I just want to work in my genius. It's like, yeah. that's nice, but that's not going to happen. You have to take, you have to step into the energy of providing yeah. the space for that, for, for you to be able to do more of that work. And so if you can go, well, today I'm stepping into my queen so that I can take care of my priestess. I think that that actually puts you in a more empowered stance. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. You could even, I'm, I'm even, like taking this a step further in my mind, I don't know if yeah. this works, but we talked to a, um, a speaker earlier in the week who has created a three-day work week, and she has an A week and a B week, which is something I've seen. It's a great way to maximize your, your time and mm -hmm. everything. So I wonder if you could have like a week where you're the priestess and a week where you're the queen. And oh, that's cool. And clients, you know, and, and doing those kinds yeah. of things. The, the, the queen week is for the visioning and the, yeah, oh, my gosh. making everything happen. I love that idea. I think that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I think that it's it's a matter of figuring out like what's your your flow too. And I think something like that would work really well if you've been having a challenge around doing that. You can be very intentional and focused. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's something that's hard for you to switch on and off from situation to situation. Now, personally, I 
I love market. I love both of the things. So, you yeah, know, easily go back and forth. Yeah, I, I tend to yeah. just because I, I love it. And that's part of what I try to teach people to do is find a way to enjoy their marketing and their messaging and make it another creative expression. Um, but, you know, I also know that I, I'm, I'm kind of an odd duck. You know, I'm just like, the more writing I can do, I'm like, yay, I get to write a newsletter. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> newsletter, another sorry, newsletter. not a newsletter, a marketing <laughs> message. I don't like calling them newsletters, <laughs> right? Email messaging. Um, I, I do enjoy doing that. I'm a weird, yeah. a weird cat that way though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's the most important thing is to do, you know, to, and this has been like a, a huge theme that's come up in every single interview so far is that you've got to do what's right for you. Right. You know, yeah, you've got to find your flow try to follow somebody else's system. If it feels yeah. wrong for you. Exactly. You know? I know it's, it's funny how often we get, we, we bump into that and, and, and we, we think we hear someone say, this is the way I'm supposed to do it. And then we try to do that for a long time and then we're not getting anywhere. With it. Yes. And we, we think there's like a failing on our part, you know? Yep. And so one day you go, Oh wait, this is just not working for me. If I do it this way, I'm doing great. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if we could get to that place sooner, we'd be a lot better off. I think. <laughs> yes, that would help. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's tough sometimes. Well, thank you for that, for sharing about the yeah. queen. That's that's got me thinking on all kinds of levels. So yeah, thank you for that. Well, could you could you share with us next about the um, what is the relationship between building your your brand, mm -hmm. developing your programs and offerings, and and all of that? Because they you know they need to fit together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I think that you know it's funny that. Early on when I was um, stepping into doing more focused branding work, I kept you know, questioning myself, like why, why do I feel compelled to, to work on all these other things too? That's not a brand. <laughs> and the thing is the brand is a part of everything. Um, you know, so it, they kind of have to go together. And I actually find now that when people start by getting really clear on their offers and their, their core offer, that can actually be a driving force for the rest of the brand too. You know, if you start really clear with what's the work, you know, we tend to start with the external things first, because that seems easier, seems more right. And actually, you got to come in like, what's the core of this? What am I really offering? And who am I really offering it to? And when you do that, everything else in your brand just makes more sense. You know, and it's all it is all woven together. And, um, you know, I call it your, your, your soul offer. You want to make sure that that core offer that whatever is at the center of your business, even if you have a bunch of other things that you're doing, you know, like here's one we can think of like Marie Forleo has B school. That's clearly her, her core offer. And of course, you know, her brand is also very much tied in with her and her image and how she does things. Um, she's got Q and a Tuesdays and other like things that she's really well known for, but I, I'm willing to bet, you know, that's her, all, everything is built off of B-School. You know, what is, what needs to serve B-School, right? So that she can fill it every year, you know? So it's very intentional. And it, it, one thing about being really clear on what your programs and offerings are um, and who they're for, it's then you're getting really clear on who your soulmate clients are and, and how to communicate with them to, for them to get what they need. And then, you know, now better what your brand needs to do to, to bridge the gap between you and what you offer and how you want to be seen and witnessed in the world and how your client wants to, I mean that how you want to be seen is always like a part of how your client wants to be seen as well. Right. Because they're connecting and, and they're energetically matching with you for a reason, <laughs> yeah. you know, so you, so there's that, uh, that other thing about really stepping into who you are and then, letting that's giving your uh, audience permission to be mirrored and witnessed in you being witnessed in who you are. It's really an interesting, an interesting experience. I found that for myself, you know, the more I step into my uh, deeper and deeper levels of authenticity, I think that I'm having, you know, greater and greater resonance because people are really, they're like, yeah, that's, I want to do more of that too. Thank you for stepping out in that. And that's where I think that, you know, a lot of us are stepping into more and more leadership and modeling because, the more you can model that authentic frequency, the more other people will do, will feel permission to do the same. Yeah. I think that is so important, especially now. I, I just feel like there's such a, um, such an energy, such an atmosphere right now of, mm -hmm. of just knowing that we need to do things differently than we've done them in the past, whatever that yeah. 
that, and that means something different for different individuals, but yeah. Um, yeah, that we, that we have a certain responsibility as, as thought leaders, you know, to, to really model a new yeah. way um, yeah. and, and a new energy and a new perspective. That's, I think that's so important for all of us to think I about agree. as we're building. Our yeah. Business. Yeah. I think that it, it is interesting when we're st stretching into new territory for ourselves, we tend to think of it in terms of risk to ourselves or fears that we have. Um, we, our brain tends to go down the I won't be accepted path. And, and really, actually, you know, when you step out more and more, I found, I mean, it doesn't mean that things don't show up when you get, if, let's say if you get really, really big, you use like super celebrity status. Yeah, yeah, people are going to, you know, be jerks sometimes. But I think on the whole, like we tend to focus on the negative when most people are really, it's more about more people being excited versus the other way around, you know. And, and it is, there is a, a shift happening toward, I, I, there's like a deepening and freedom, more freedom and permission to, to be self-expressed and to be yourself. Um, and we want to be a part of what's cre creating that beautiful expansion. We want to be going with it and, and to, to be able to be leading that, be a part of the leading of that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think that's, yeah, just so important to bring into mm -hmm. what we are doing. I agree. Um, well, so I love this part of your title for your talk today about uh, brand magic. Yeah. And, and I feel like that speaks to this self-expression and, and mm -hmm. authenticity, you know, that we really want to bring forth. So um, what is your, what is your take on, on that, on how to create a really authentic brand? You mm -hmm. know, how can we go about doing that? Yeah. So you know, it, it, a lot of it comes from getting really clear on, you know, so we talk about your core genius. So there's, that is an important part of it, your natural gifts and tendencies that are expanding and growing over your life experience, right? We're just, and we sometimes discover we have new gifts. <laughs> that, yes, we didn't, didn't know we're there. <laughs> yeah. And then we have to go, you know, give those lots of space and explore those. Um, and then there's also our personal interests and our passions too. I think, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to say, okay, well, that, that goes off to the side. You know, I, I don't do that over here. And there are times when you don't necessarily want to. I mean, I think about, um, you know, sometimes people are artists and, and there's no, they actually don't want to weave it in because they want that to be really sacred and to have its own space. But there are parts of us that we leave out of our business and our brand that we can weave in, you know. And of course, early on for me, I mean, the, the easiest example I can find is, um, I would do tarot readings a lot on the side, you know, <laughs> and, and now of course, you know, I made my own tarot deck and I made my own Oracle deck and I pull cards and, and client sessions now, you know, when we get stuck. And of course I would have thought that was weird once upon a time, but I, I wove it in and, and now I feel like it's more fun and people like it, you know, and that's the thing that, that I was surprised by is how much people liked it. I thought I was just putting it in there cause I like it. And of course all mm -hmm. my clients love that kind of thing too. Um, you know, it's not the focus, but I get to bring, bring that in. And, and, and more and more, you know, I found ways to weave my creative self into my brand, into my work, and that has made it more resonant. But there's something else, like, I've been playing with in the last couple of years, too, and it's, again, around archetypes and thinking about um, the idea of being authentic and genuine. And sometimes I feel like we're stepping out into more visibility, you know, especially early on, there's this, this question of integrity that's always haunting us. You know, we want to be really authentic. And sometimes that manifests as like being resistant to, to other people being visible. I don't want to do it like that. They're, they're posting all the time on Facebook. I've, if I see another new headshot, I'm going to go crazy or something, you know, like, especially when you're surrounded by business owners, you know, that seems to be the case, you know, everyone's, I know that her authentic thing that she wrote about her vulnerable moment it was really just a marketing message in disguise I know you know <laughs> yeah. early on that's the things we say now I love it like I just embrace all of it you know but there was a time when that I would have to laugh at those moments early on in my career um I would go what the heck is going on in my brain and, and then I started to notice it wasn't just me doing that and I've paid attention to that over the years and so there's this obsession with being authentic and it can show up as like I'm not going to do it like that 
you know, they're not being authentic and really it's the fear of visibility. So that's one thing. Yeah, that's <laughs> but, very interesting. Yeah. Cause I think we've all been there, done that. Yeah. But... <laughs> yeah that's the way it manifests, right? Is that it's, it's like they're doing it wrong and that's actually my fear of visibility coming up. So that's one thing. Yeah. Um, but stepping beyond authenticity, it, I've been really, pl- really interested in this. And then the, the trickster archetype is some, something that comes up for me. Because sometimes when you're stepping into something new, it's not about, it's not authentic to you yet. You know, when you're stepping into a new energy, it's not authentic. Or what if, you know, there is a creative reason to play with a different archetype than is technically genuine, but it's perfect for the healing work that you're trying to provide through your message or the image that you're creating. You know, you think about like, I, I, I talk about David Bowie a lot, but you know, he played a lot with the trickster archetype. He put on different personas to let the work come through that persona, you know, for different albums. He was creatively using different archetypes and masks. And of course we didn't think that that was him, but that didn't matter so much. And I think that giving ourselves permission to play with a new archetype and go, I'm going to try this one on, or I'm going to put this out there. It's not technically who I am. Like when I'm sitting in my jammies watching Netflix at home, you know, like <laughs> it's not that authentic, but it, but it's creatively authentic. You know, it serves a purpose. It's intentional. It's used, it's used in love. It's used with, with play, a playful spirit that I think giving ourselves more permission to step into those kinds of energies and to step into brands that leave a little room for us to play and be a little bit of a trickster is, is actually a really powerful thing to play with. And so to kind of put the authenticity to the side a moment and go, but how do I want to be a trickster and how do I want to play in this space? Do I absolutely need it to be exactly me? Like, can I actually have a persona online and in my pictures that isn't the me that everyone else sees every day? Is that okay? You know, used to think that like, oh, it's got to be perfectly aligned. I don't want to, you know, seem false. And of course, you know, I, I, I think that there is um, a p- point at which you're pretending to be someone you're not. You know, you can push that too far. But, but to play with it a little bit, to go, oh, I'm going to play with my image. That's, that's fine. That's fun. I'm going to have fun with this as opposed to making it very serious. Yeah. Yeah. To allow it to be like creative play. Yeah, exactly. And we and take I, things very seriously sometimes. We don't mean yes. to. <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah. I know all about and, that. <laughs> and I would venture to say that, you know, the archetypes that we are kind of inclined to take on mm-hmm. may be something within us that we just haven't developed yet, right? Or we haven't yeah. get out of the bag yet, you know. Right. So it's it even seems to me like important for our personal development to do that. Every I, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, like why do people get haircuts when they're going through a big life change? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, it's an identity shift. And you, you know, to your point, you think about people we look up to and admire, you know, um, they, they tend to have qualities that are, that are already in us that we are just stepping into or we're starting to step yeah. into. Yeah. You know, so you think about and then thinking again about archetypes, anyone you admire, sit down and list everything you admire about them mm-hmm. and then go, okay, well, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. <laughs> or I'm not yet, maybe, or I'm very close, but that potential is already in there inside of you. Otherwise you wouldn't be noticing it in them. Right. Or the desire to become that. Yeah. 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 And you're stepping into that in some way you have the capacity already because you wouldn't notice it. If that frequency wouldn't match if you didn't already, uh, you know, have it in you. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. And yeah, if some commented, I have to comment on this. I know. I love it. (laughs) She's been with me through so many of my, my summits now. And in one of them, she was, you know, deeply on her spiritual journey and she shaved her head, like as a result of some of the things we were talking about in the summit and was very visible with it. So yeah, it just, yeah. Huge, huge kudos to Ibtisam for being courageous. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That I love it. Or a head shave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't been brave enough to do that when I feel my skull. It feels a little, little weirdly lumpy. I'm like, I don't know if that's going to work out for me. <laughs> it's tempting though. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you're thinking about it, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Do it at some point. <laughs> I know it's true. I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Yeah. Well, so what advice um, would you have for, for people who are, you know, either starting out on their branding journey for their business or maybe wanting to make a change to their existing brand? Um, mm -hmm. Like what are, what's important for us to know when we're in that, that point in the process? Yeah, absolutely. That's a good question. So what I think is that it's important to recognize if you're a light worker and you are, if you're here, <laughs> that you're always evolving and you're always going to be evolving and that's never going to stop. That's never going to change. Um, so I used to, yeah, I used to make this joke with my old website clients. I would say, uh, so here's the thing. We're going to start making this website. And then by the time we're done, you're going to have changed and you're going to hate it already. <laughs> You know, because because the, there's a transformational journey you go on when you make a website. You're getting very clear about who you are, and the moment you get clear about who you are is the moment you want to change into someone else. <laughs> I have been there. <laughs> yeah. I have done that. <laughs> so it's it's like once you identify identify that and accept that as the reality, and and then you don't have to to strain with that. Laura says yes to that. <laughs> um, you know, so you, you don't have to fight with it. You just go, okay, this is the way it is. I'm going to step out onto this journey to create this new thing or to do that new thing. And it's going to feel like the ground is constantly shifting underneath me. And that's just part of the deal. And I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to, because that's the other thing we can never, we can never launch or we can never make the change because it's never right. So you yeah. kind of have to plant your flag a little bit as you go, a little more, a little more. Um, but you're never going to really arrive, you know, you'll have a new launch and it'll feel good for a minute. <laughs> and then, and then you'll go, Oh, but now that's not right. You know? So this, it's just having a little bit of grace with the process, I think is very important and do what you can do the next thing that you can do. It doesn't have to all happen all in one go. We tend to, you know, think in absolutes. Um, one of my teachers calls them perfect pictures you make up these perfect pictures about how it's all going to come together. And then um, if it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, you don't feel like it's working out. It's like, we're, we're, what's happening when you're a light worker is that you're connected to the, the astral realm. Most of us, like we can see the, 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 the original blueprint, <laughs> you know, <laughs> purest, truest, beyond perfection blueprint. Like perfection isn't even a concept in the astral. It's just things are what they are. It's like all this vortex of, of all the co-creative components in this beautiful swirl. And we read it and then we go, I want that. I'm going to, I want that right there. And I'm going to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, <laughs> never. <laughs> that wasn't why we incarnated here. We incarnated okay. to play with space and time and to see things unfold imperfectly over, over moments, you know? And, and so just to remember that, you know, if you're a creative person, which you probably are also, you know, it's, uh, you're going to feel like, um, that things never look the way they look in your head, so to speak. And, and that's okay. That's just part of the game. And it, it, if you if your transmission is or your frequency is there, it's okay. It doesn't matter. That will, people will read your mock-up with you if you hold the energy, right? So you just keep holding the energy and then say, I know this isn't perfect, but it's like, it's a great window into my mock-up. Do you see my mock-up? And they go, yeah, I can read that thing in the astral, you yeah. know? So it's an energetic way to look at it as you're evolving and expanding and not, not worry so much about things not being perfect, I think. Yeah, I, I find that very comforting. <laughs> I really do because, you know, yeah, I think we all we all want it to be perfect. You know, we want to get things perfect. But if we just accept the fact that, you know, it's not going to be perfect. It's it's yeah. not. But it's a it's a representation of where you are right now in your continual mm -hmm. growth and up leveling and and evolution. And um, you know, I I. I have a, a course, a business building course. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the main things that I say over and over in that course to my students is that, you know, this, this is an evolutionary process. You're going to change and change again and change again. And it's good. It's all good. And it, and yeah. it is okay. And it's all part of the plan, you know, take a breath. It's okay. <laughs> Some days it feels like, Oh gosh, can I just stop changing? Can I get off the ride for a second? No. 
Sorry. You know, truly, like none of us really want to be doing the same thing 20 years from no, now. No, of course. You know, we're going to be 20 versions different by then. So yeah, more. Yeah, totally okay. agreed. One of the keys to happiness, as far as I'm concerned. So me too. Yeah, I, if I I don't I don't ever want. I mean, just sitting still is not an option for me, for sure. You know, and and the thing is, it's funny. Like we feel like. Sometimes we feel like we've changed a lot and it's all degrees, right? That, that little tiny tweak and that little tiny change can feel so big to us Yes. that it makes everything impossible. <laughs> everything is impossible. And it's like, well, actually, it's really not that big of a change. Just change a few words here, change a few words there. You're good. Like, it's okay. You don't have to reinvent the whole thing. I can't tell you how many times I've been like, I got to write all this new content. And then I happened to discover a file that I wrote like two or three years ago and I, I read it and I go, this is all the same, except for two things, this and that, you know, like how, how, why do I think it's all so different? You know? <laughs> I'm really just evolving. I'm not like, I didn't just wake up one day and turn into a whole different person. It didn't happen. Yeah. It feels that way. But it didn't. <laughs> Gradual shifts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Teresa. This has been so much fun and, and yeah, just awesome. thank you. The value of what you're sharing here is just amazing. So yeah, thank oh, you so much. Thank for you for, for inviting me to do it. This has been a blast. I really enjoyed it. And I love, as you can see, I just love talking about this stuff. I never, I yeah. can just do it all day. <laughs> good, good. Well, and so I know you are offering a wonderful free gift, the Soul Brand Guide yes. um, to everyone listening. So would you like to say a few more words about that? Yeah. So my soul brand guide, it, 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 it's a, an ebook that helps you get really clear on kind of the frequency stuff around uh, building your brand and why it's important. And, uh, you know, the things around visibility that we were talking about, you know, the fears that light workers tend to have. So there's a, there's some juicy content in there for that. And if you sign up for that, I actually have something that's going to be dropping very soon. It's going to uh, be a six uh, training e-course for, uh, it's called High, High Vibe Visibility Secrets for Healers, Coaches, and Lightworkers. And so it's not live yet, but it will be soon. So if you sign up for that, you'll also get that as soon as it comes out in the next week or two. Fantastic. So it's like two free gifts Yeah. for just one, one little action here. So <laughs> yes. everybody go ahead and, and be sure to claim that. So if you're live on the call, I just put that link in the chat so you can easily click on it and grab that free gift right now. And if you're listening to this as a recording, just scroll down a little bit below this video screen and you will see the link right there to get Teresa's free gifts. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Thank you for offering those. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for, for putting it out there for people. I'm excited to yeah. see to see who partakes. Yes. Yes. So I would love to open this up for Q and a now. So anyone who would like to ask Teresa a question or share a comment or a, an insight that you've had while we have been talking here, please go ahead and raise your hand. And so just look for that hand icon in zoom. You'll see it right there. You can click on that or tap on that if you're on a mobile device and we'll bring you over to chat with us. And if you, so I highly recommend becoming visible by raising your hand, but if you really don't want to be visible, you can also ask your question in the chat and I will read it and we'll talk about it that way too. Okay, Ibtisam, I am bringing you over. Okay, hi Ibtisam, I can't see you, but we should be able to hear you. Oh, there ah, you are. Hi. Hi. And see wow. how beautifully her hair has grown back since she <laughs> it's, it. It is gorgeous. 18 months. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah, I'm just trying to get, oh, I can't get you. I don't know, I'm not being able to see you now that you've got me on. I'm seeing a very, all, all three of us really tiny. But anyway, I can't tell you. Oh my God, Jocelyn, it's been after many, many months that I'm feeling this in my body. Teresa, I cannot, I'm, I oh my God, I have, you know, like Monique said that day that you want to jump up on the table and do a jig. I want to do somersaults, cartwheels. I don't know, all sorts of stuff. Even things I don't know. Maybe like swim and sink. And I don't know. It was just like energetically, my everything was going crazy. So I kind of started making deep breaths. That day. means it's really important for you. All, all that you heard here. Oh, so great. <laughs> I love that. Your topic. It's even your topic because the word magic and, you know, Jocelyn, we know my connection with magic, right? Magic of, magic of you online and, and her title and the fact that I'm trying to do 
I've been sort of incubating magic of intimacy forever. Like if somebody can just get, and now I kind of think, you know what? Forget the labor pains. Can I don't I don't want to wait. Can somebody just get? Can somebody induce this now? <laughs> <laughs> That's so I'm funny. like so yeah. done. I you know I have to kind of tell myself, be patient. Divine timing. Divine timing. Mm-hmm. Trust it. And there are some days I swear I feel I just want a C-section. I just like come on, <laughs> like just do it now, please. I can't do this anymore. Yeah, it's been there. And, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just everything, and it, the the synchronicities were, you know, like there are a lot of things I don't know. Just to give you a quick background, so you know, mm-hmm. things you said about it, I've been um been a psychotherapist for like over seventeen years, and mm-hmm. my main mm-hmm. thing was relationship counseling. So everything that you mentioned, uh, you know, I had a thriving practice, like a long waiting. I was living in India, and when a bit of strange things, I moved back. I I was all I had. I was working in an organization in England. And mm-hmm. I moved back to India and uh, I was sort of setting up house, getting everyone, adju- you know, my daughter adjusted in school. And I was feeling really miserable that I stopped working and I went to a homeopath for something. And she says, what do you do? Because as she was talking to me, I, I was doing all the reflection. She, I wasn't even giving her a chance to say anything because I was doing my own reflection back. So I said, I'm a counselor. She said, we need people like you around. Would you just like to start working in my, you know, I've got a, another room. So, you know, when you said about that, that the temple is provided yeah. and I'm like, yes, I never did anything. It was just complete word of mouth practice. After the mm-hmm. first plan, I never looked back. It was just like, mm-hmm. it was magic. And this lady, I kind of just, she had, it just, everything was working. Then uh-huh. weird circumstances, I moved back to England and my practice drops. Weird stuff starts happening to my uh-huh. body. My life crumbles apart. Everything I knew just disappears. Wow. That's when I, lots of things were happening when Jocelyn came into my life. And then I, I now, you know, if this ever is written in a massive narrative, my tagline is going to be, and the rest is history. <laughs> it, everything started changing. And then uh, anyway, to cut a long story short, because, you know, when you, when you, just before you mentioned the word tarot, all mm. these things, because I've been a psychotherapist, everything has very been in the head. Mm. And for the last 18 months, a lot of embodied stuff, you know, doing a lot of five rhythms, just getting into the body and feeling things. Yeah. And, you know, when you talked about the goddess and the priestess, and I think I kind of hold that. I, I kind of, you know, a lot of, mm-hmm. there's so many things about sexuality and the kind of work that I had to bring in. And, you know, this is, this is the visibility factor mm-hmm. of, it's also interesting that I'm actually sitting with a seamless t-shirt today because I never, almost never expose my, my, I can't explain this. Anyway, um, I'm just it's going like, to it's like you're becoming more visible. Down a bit. <laughs> because, uh, it, because it's, it's got, it's got so much involved with sexuality and women's sexual, sexuality and men's because of my nature of work. Mm-hmm. This was an area where you say there was terrific resistance in my own self because counseling and doing relationship work is one thing but bringing in the whole di- you know di- dynamic of psych- uh, uh, sexuality yeah. given that I also was a psychosexual counselor but still this is this is a whole different shame blame arena and my own personal lived in experiences with a lot of stuff mm-hmm. so I think there was so much of resistance and when you were speaking about you know, things like, no, I want to do it my way. And this is not, and I think Jocelyn will understand. I have, you know, every time she sort of gently pushed me forward. I'm like, no, that's not, I'm not going to do Facebook. I'm not going to do this. I'm not, this is not my style. I, I just don't do it. And, you know, when you said something like, and I kind of say this, I said, this is not my work. Like for Christ's sake, I'm not the kind of person who's going to create a website. Somebody else will do it for me. That's not my thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's so kind of, I'm doing what I'm good, good at. It's like, Mm-hmm. And when you said that, it resonated. I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm waiting for these other collaborative people mm-hmm. who are good at what they are doing and let them do that. I'm doing so when you and then when you mentioned about the queen, and I'm like, yeah, that was the masculine, you know, that was for me that that mm-hmm. spoke really loudly that I needed to get that the doer out as well. That you know, you can't just yeah. do this sort of priestess right. and say, I'm going to snap my fingers. But now, having said that, you can do both. 
sometimes it's just we get into one mode right you go all the way too far and then yeah and you can hire people to do things i mean not everyone can to do all the things so there are things that you know we want to hire out that we should be doing ourselves like our messaging but yeah 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 uh, it sounds like it sounds like you're good at manifesting things i think that's the thing like a lot of us are but then you, there's a, a point at which it's like you have to actually weave your energy into it and actually bring make the thing happen <laughs> yeah. you are ready I, some you are ready yeah you're so it sounds ready. like it to me and i love that you're honoring more of your where your real interests lie now and it's you know it's funny with something you're mentioning is how our what happens often is our personal edge is the edge that we're meant to explore with our clients yeah. too. Always. And, and I was yeah. making notes while she was speaking. And for me, one of the biggest issues all my life uh, has been about permission. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting, I mean, you know, been very approval seeking. And will somebody give me the permission, then I'll do it. And I think this whole journey with Jocelyn has, and, and I call Jocelyn and her tribe, whether yeah. it's three symbols, it's, They've all been like, I've been felt held, even though the journey has been very on your own. Mm -hmm. It still feels there is someone, someone out there who's understanding you. But oh, yes. I think what I wanted to mention is the, the thing that you, that you said about authenticity. And, uh, and I think it's also a question that, uh, you know, when you said what you want, the, what you want for yourself is what you want for the clients. And I think that's for me is exactly what it is, that it's about being it's living your true potential in your fullest with courage, with, with integrity. Mm -hmm. That is what I want for myself and for my clients. And mm -hmm. I think that is what my clarity, that is, that mm -hmm. is my client base. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Awesome. And it's, and it's, and most importantly, it's balancing the masculine and feminine because that has mm -hmm. been a huge struggle for me all my life, you know, really. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, with this session, I, I, I knew that was, but you kind of just totally packed it for me. So thank you. No, oh, thank um, you for sharing. It's so lovely to hear your story. And it sounds like, sounds to me like you, the, the thing that you need to birth this baby, this 20 month baby is, <laughs> is to decide, to decide that it's time. Just it's make time. It and, and when you mentioned, you know, like, like 20 seconds before you mentioned tarot cards and now all this is very esoteric and very uh -huh. I've never done all this but I was doing it with a friend the other day uh -huh. and she made me take this out and I I took this oh particular yeah oh lovely oh yes I'm familiar with that deck <laughs> and the funny thing is this happened 20 seconds before I was thinking tarot cards oh so you never do tarot and, that's so funny. and then you mentioned that word I'm like this is synchronicity and what it says <laughs> as well you know when you said that she just snaps her fingers and she manifests things mm -hmm. and when you said that I'm like oh my god that's exactly what the interpretation is. yeah do you do you remember the name of that deck I don't remember what it is it's do you called Osho Zen Osho Zen that's it that's the one uh, yeah. yeah, it's called Osho Zen and, and she gave me the whole interpretation and because I fell in love with the card, she kind of gave the card to me. She said, take it home and put it on your altar. So that's <laughs> what I've been doing. But it's it's wonderful what the the what 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 is said, you know, what you said about the playfulness and it's all about yeah. being alive and it's all about sexuality. And I'm like, I was just going crazy. I'm like, oh my god, this is working. This is this is it. That's great. So oh, I'm so excited for you. Yeah, and she, and she says it's all about being fully alive and, uh -huh. and letting other people express their joy of being alive. And uh -huh. then I'm thinking of Claire's interview. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is Jocelyn. Oh, so, so good. So good. I love it. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. I love your bubbling energy. It's fabulous. <laughs> Me too. I, now I feel like I just had a caffeine boost for the rest of my day. <laughs> Feeling, I, I, you know, I've, I've never done any sort of um, drugs. I've only done magic mushrooms once in my life. But right now, I feel I've got everything pumping in my body. I had to literally sit on my hands because I want to. I was, I was, I'd written there. I wanted to raise all my hands. I, I thought I had to develop tentacles. Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh my god. Thank all right. you, Thank so you. for sharing. This has been beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a lovely day, and hopefully, us. I hope to see you in our next interview. Too. <laughs> bye bye. Okay, um, Don, let me bring you over to talk with us here. Hello. Hi, Don. 
Welcome. How are you? Thank, you? Thank you. I just love that last conversation. <laughs> and you know, part of it is that energy that we bring to each other, right? The support yeah. is just amazing. In our own work, we still have this tribe around us that has that energy that we just enjoyed right now. So, so one of the questions I have is yes to all of the ideas, right? Yes to the evolution. Mm -hmm. And that happens for me all the time. Mm -hmm. My question is, at what point do you stay, right? You know, you, you begin to get something going and it's starting to go and then this next idea comes in and you kind of transfer to that, but you don't stay long enough. Mm -hmm. to, Great question. And I will say, honestly, to tie it in with monetizing, right? You know, if you keep kind of leaving mm -hmm. what you started because you have this other great idea. Right. So I would just love a little bit of... Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's great. I, you know, I think that it's important, you, if you can find something that kind of covers most of the bases of, of what, what you're attempting to do, you're really clear on what it is that you're trying, what kind of results you're trying to get with people and what kind of experience you want to have. And you create a container for that. You, you keep the container pretty steady, but then you add to it or you shift it in little ways rather than abandoning it entirely. You know, it doesn't have to become a whole new thing. And I, I find that, I mean, there are times when it becomes clear that something needs to branch off or it needs to change, um, or I need to do something totally new. Maybe not, to, it's usually not totally new. It might just have a new name and like I may have taken half of it out and put a new, new half of something in, right? But, um, you want to try to keep something, your primary, like I call your soul offer, you want to try to keep that steady for at least a couple of years so you can give it a chance to evolve an avalanche. And then you can put your toe into other things and explore other things as long as they're not, you know, taking you away from your, your core focus. I think it's always important to have one core thing that you're letting it grow and expand. And then, you know, it's also a matter of like giving it time. Like if you have a new idea, you can start working on it a little bit and documenting it, but if after time it doesn't keep building momentum, you know, then maybe it wasn't something that you were meant to do. It's, 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 it's a, the key is not to just abandon things, is to give it time to, to prove whether or not it's actually that next thing that you're meant to evolve into. And um, I think it's helpful when you have uh, like the coaches and, and contain other containers you can go into where people can witness to you. Like, actually you're, it sounds, this sounds like shiny object syndrome, <laughs> right? Shiny object syndrome, you know, maybe give it a little time and let it shake out and see if it's still making sense. You know, um, it, this one's a tough one because there's really no hard and fast answer. And it's kind of a, a, a trick of knowing yourself. If you know that you're the kind of person who is a generative, very creative person, and you do feel like you fall prey to bright, shiny object syndrome, ask yourself always when something new comes up, is, is this furthering my overall goals? How does this tie back to my business? Is this actually moving the mark for me on my business? And if the answer is no, it doesn't mean that you don't do it per se. It just means give it more time to feel into it just to make sure that it's not something your soul is beckoning you to do. Cause you know, like I'm also running a, a web series. I'm making a show uh, sometime the next year or two. And you know, I had to spend a lot of time with that. Is this going to further my goals? And there are ways that it can, but it's actually, that's essential to my soul and I have to do it. Like it's the thing I just have to do to, to feel complete. So now I'm like, okay, well how can I structure everything else so that I can create space for that as opposed to it being the, the thing that I just abandon everything for, you know, cause that's our temptation when we get, it's a, it's a way of running away sometimes. And I learned that about, cause I'm an artist too. So my art side used to fight all the time with my business side and it would be this weird pendulum swing. Like, no, I'm an artist now. No, I'm a businesswoman now. No, I'm an artist now. And I realized I was sabotaging them both, you know, by, by doing that. And I eventually came to this place of, okay, I get to have a thing that's growing and developing and I get to create space to explore this over here if I need to when I, you know, when I'm able to. I don't know if that answers your question. It probably doesn't exactly answer it. <laughs> I have that container. I feel like I have finally yeah. kind of a core piece. And maybe what's happening is that within that core piece, 
there it's like mind mapping, right? You have your yeah. core idea in the middle and then you've got all these little bubbles around. And so what's happening is with that core idea, mm -hmm. for instance, I've written a book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I want to do the second book because there's that bubble, right? Yeah. But I haven't spent enough time kind of promoting the first book or oh, right. speaking to it as a speaker. Right. And coach. Um, and so I feel like sometimes I just, okay, Dawn, you need to pull back and kind of mm -hmm. complete a little bit more of that circle before you step into this. So yeah. yeah, I think what you said is very helpful. And it is acknowledging that the core piece actually is there. I know what that is. Mm -hmm. and, and slowing down maybe a little bit and saying, mm -hmm. okay, here's this idea. I'm just going to put it in the parking lot. Right. Or develop, or develop it when you can. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can make time for it, you know, spend, put it, put a little bit of time in your week. Cause yeah. that is the perennial problem for writers, honestly, yeah. is you know, <laughs> by the time that you're marketing your first book, you already want to write another book. It's just the way it is, you know? Exactly. And, and, uh, and so I would say make it a yes. And that, yeah. you know, try yeah. to find a way into a yes. And with it, it's like, a okay. Coaching phrase. Yeah. Yeah. Just go ahead and, do, do keep marketing the other and then make a little time in your schedule to do the other. Cause obviously it wouldn't be coming through for you if it wasn't important. Yes. You know? exactly. Well, so. and that's the trust I have, right? That's, yeah. that's it's so, sound, what I'm reading for you is that you do need to write that next book. I, I, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. This has been fabulous. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for asking your question too. That's a really great one. I'm glad you, I'm glad you said it. And thanks for sharing about your book. I'm excited to well, hopefully hear about your book. Thank you. Uh, both your books. <laughs> yeah, great question, Dawn. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. Have a great day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we have a question in the chat from Brenda. Um, yeah. Where can we learn more about the archetypes, please? Yeah, so uh, I am in the process, speaking of books, I'm both things. I, 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 I'm developing a group program around working within archetypes for your brand. It's going to be called a soul brand secrets program and that I'm going to probably be launching mid March. So there's that. Um, and there will be a book related to it. I, I, once I started writing the program, a book basically wrote itself. <laughs> so that speaking of books that will be, be coming up. And yeah, I, then in my newsletter, I do talk about archetypes. Um, and my, my, uh, email list. So if you sign up for that, I will be messaging around that. Uh, for that program and of course around archetypes and around all kinds of things around branding and visibility I do talk about in my on my list so yeah if you sign up for the free free offer you'll be on my list and you'll get all that all those goodies awesome thank you yeah. thank you thanks for asking let's see I'm looking for more questions so I don't see any more questions in the chat mm -hmm. so I'm gonna do do a last call here last call to ask Teresa your question um, don't be shy. This has been such a great interview. I know, I know there will be some more questions out there. So go ahead and raise your hand if you'd like to ask her something. And if not, we'll go ahead and close. Everybody's being, being quiet now. <laughs> if <decide> <laughs> <have> more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think, I think we will probably go ahead and close the call then. Oh, let's see. Did Okay, Alice is raising her hand. So Alice, let me bring you over. Hi, Alice. Hi, Alice. Hi. Welcome. Um, yeah, question. I, I'm, I'm Alice. I was uh, very surprised about the archetypes. Uh, I like it very much. Uh, yeah, because of my name is Alice and I like very much to uh, make nice green environments and use creativity and uh, work with children and help um, schools to make nice environments. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you have some tips about archetypes, uh, the combination of my name, Alice in Wonderland. I use it uh, also in, uh, um, in a video for crowdfunding. So there's the music of Alice in Wonderland and I'm talking about uh, yeah, creating Wonderlands. Oh, beautiful. Uh, so, but maybe, yeah, I, I was thinking during your talk about rabbits, about <laughs> animals, about 
Uh, I'm I'm from hiding myself. I'm now fifty plus. I'm fifty three, I think. Uh -huh. And um, I I don't like to be visible, but I know I have I have to. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's really a big thing. It's uh, there there is a, a really a lot of fear and yeah, it's 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 out of childhood, of course. I don't I, know, yeah. but maybe maybe you have some tips about. Uh, archetypes and Alice in Wonderland yeah. and animals and how yeah. to make nice combinations. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that, you know, it, coming into your, like your question about being afraid of being visible and how that kind of stems from childhood, I would say you can find, um, if you can think of an art, I mean, for one, well, Alice in Wonderland, she's kind of fearless and she's going into the <laughs> unknown, right? Uh, into this this whole other land and not being afraid to ask questions and not being afraid to not know what to do, <laughs> you know, in this in this new environment. So if you were to adopt that particular archetype for yourself, then think about it as uh, the, kind of from the perspective of Alice, like you can go into this t terrain of maybe doing um, being more online or doing more, you know, I don't know if you want to do videos or if you want to do more messaging, um, whatever you end up doing giving yourself permission to be in this unknown world, this world where you don't feel like you know, understand all the rules, right? And it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to, to eat the wrong, you can eat the one thing that makes you bigger because then you can go drink the mm. other thing that makes you smaller and it's going to be fine. Everything's going to end up being balanced in the end and you're going to find your way, you know? So that could be one way for you to step into that archetype around visibility. And then I love you, you mentioned rabbits. So rabbits represent, uh, tend to represent in tarot, it, it's connected with the, the, the Empress card, which is my, you know, the, the flip side is the queen archetype. It's about mm -hmm. um, being prolific. It's about fecundity. It's about um, creativity and birthing, you know? So um, if you're connecting with rabbits, if you're feeling a strong connection with rabbits, you know, think about um, you know, the, the white rabbit kind of led her into this creative zone, right? She, she followed the rabbit into mm. this really rich, creative, fertile place. And so where, where is the rabbit leading you? Do you, do you, what's your in, in, inclination? Do you follow the rabbit or do you talk yourself out of following the rabbit? Do you just stay out of Wonderland? Do you stay under the tree and just keep reading your book? You know, so if you have a curiosity or an insight, do, is your, is your tendency to shut it down or do you actually follow it? So there's that, that part of the rabbit energy. And then you can, of course, just use the rabbit energy in, in, in just being creative and playful with your brand itself. If you're working with children, um, giving yourself more permission to play might make it easier for you to be visible, maybe being more childlike in your own exploration of that and letting it be um, something that you, you, you jump into playfully as opposed to it with seriousness. I don't know, is that helping at all? Is any of that connecting for you or giving you uh, a way in uh, a little bit yes um, yeah I don't know <laughs> I don't know I, I, I really have to play with um, with videos I think and to uh, the, the Facebook thing mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know Just how pick to one you don't have to do master everything at one mm -hmm. time pick one thing mm -hmm. that you're gonna try to get a little better at you know yeah. whichever one feels the, like the easiest one for you to get into and follow, it doesn't have to be all of them. That's yeah, yeah. Be my advice. Yeah. So whatever you're more curious about, start there. Yeah, yeah. Another thing I, I wanted to say is mm -hmm. um, you, you, you all, um, hello. <laughs> it's all good. Go, no worries. You, you said before uh, you are very creative. So you have different aspects you want to do. So uh, yeah. I, also, I'm, I'm organizing little events. I'm mm -hmm. on events with my tent and with my chickens to, to do creative workshop with children. But you know, mm -hmm. I'm, all, I'm also an organizer. Um, yeah, I, I want to show films to, to get people together, to have connection and to mm -hmm. learn about what is necessary to develop in our world. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have a lot of different things and, and I studied bi biochemistry. So it's, oh, it's I love it. so uh, yeah, I'm nothing and I'm all. So sometimes it's, it's very yeah, disturbing. So where am I going? What's my 
the, the big thing is to change the world and to make mm -hmm. it healthier and wealthier and happier. That's that, that's what mm -hmm. I have on my cards. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh huh. So, and there's the, another side, and it's 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 where I am on an event. Oh, and lovely. I I put my tent over there. It's very mm -hmm. natural. It's very nice in, in the Beautiful. Netherlands. And, and I have my chickens with me so to make the mm -hmm. connections with the animals. And mm -hmm. it's really very nice. So, yeah. It, it's so it's, fabulous. It's overwhelming. Some, some yeah, time. well, but, you know, so, sometimes I would say it sounds to me like you're a very giving person. And, um, you know, sometimes we tend to overgive. <laughs> and it's, it's that, cool. that's what I that's don't. where it can be hard and that's another thing light workers have it has a tendency to be overgiving yeah. and sometimes you have to get back into the center of like what is my real mission and is everything actually moving me toward that if you're so kind of getting in touch with your queen energy that mm. she she she's a, the one that you check in with when you're you're wondering if you're depleted and you're depleting yourself and if you're getting depleted you're not in as high a level of service also so the best way in with the helper mentality to, to make headway is to remind your helper i'm actually not helping as well if i'm over helping when i try to do too much i'm not as helpful as i think i am and if you could do a little less you might have a little more bandwidth to learn the technology and the communication piece it might not feel so overwhelming and one thing i try to say is when you're going into new technology um try to put aside all of the stories you have about how hard it's going to be or how old you are or whatever you know barrier you might have to it and go, go, I'm exploring, I'm an explorer, I'm going to, I'm going to make that mistake. And I'm going to make, I don't care, I'm going to make all the mistakes, you know, and you'll learn faster. You know, you'll, you'll actually learn faster, because it's actually, it's usually not that hard to learn and get the hang of it. I mean, sometimes there are things that are challenging. But, but if, if you go in with a, a, a mindset of willingness, and you have some spaciousness in your life, if you don't have a lot of room, um, it's hard to to expand those things. But the thing is, if you do, you're going to have more people coming to your events. You're going to get mm. further with what you're trying to do. So it is worth it to your, if you see that as integral to your mission, it's actually part of the mission, maybe just as important as you hosting an event. Maybe mm. if you had a choice, you would host one less event and do a little more marketing, and then you could actually do more of what you want to do. So I would say yeah. play with that idea a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you for sharing. I love Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I love what you're doing. It sounds wonderful. <laughs> I want to go. I want to come to the Netherlands and go to your event. You said yeah. chickens, right? You have chickens at your event. Yes. Oh, yeah, I want to come meet your chickens. I have them at home, and 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 people, they are very surprised. They, I, a lot of people were saying, I never touched a chicken. <laughs> they are so soft, and said that they are. Oh very yeah. Alive. Yeah, they chickens are amazing. They can actually be yeah. very sweet, very yeah. friendly. Well, thank you for sharing. Great, right. great. Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Alice. Such a good question. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Yes, you too. Thank you. Thank you. And Alice, there's a great comment uh, in the chat from Pamela. So definitely make sure to read that. Okay. All right. Well, this has been so wonderful, <laughs> Teresa. Thank yes, you again. Thank you. And yeah, this oh, has been so been much great fun. for me too. Thank you. I just I've enjoyed it, and I appreciate everyone's questions too. That's been yeah, really, really good fun. Questions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and thank you for your awesome, awesome answers. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think everyone has learned so much here for your session. Oh, so. so glad. Yeah, so just a reminder to everyone, if you haven't already gone to claim Teresa's free gift, make sure to go do that now. And then you'll also, well, you'll get both of her gifts, including the one that's coming out soon. And you'll be on her newsletter to learn more about all of these topics. So make sure to do that. And um, also make sure to join us again at 1 p.m. Eastern today because we will have another amazing speaker, uh, Rachel Aeolian Hart. Um, she is an astrologer. And she's going to be speaking about how I became a stellar entrepreneur. So she's always wonderful and engaging. So everybody make sure to come back to the Zoom link at 1 p.m. New York time and join me and Rachel then. All right. Well, again, Teresa, thank you so much. I hope you have thank a wonderful you. day. And yeah, thank you. thank you for being a part of this event. Oh, so fun. And bye, everyone. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.